Hey guys and welcome back to my channel for another midweek mystery video. On the 29th of April 2017, 27 year old beautician Magdalena Zouk jumped out of a hospital window. She was on holiday on her own in the Egyptian beach resort of Masa Alam and although her death has officially been recorded as suicide, there's still a lot of questions surrounding it. Now Magdalena, or Magda as I'm going to refer to her in this case, was actually Polish and she died in Egypt, meaning that most sources on this case are not in English. There's actually a very limited amount of resources about this in English. So as I always say when I'm covering foreign cases, if I make any mistakes, please feel free to correct me politely in the comments down below. There may be little details that I miss that just Google Translate can't really pick up on. Um, I really, really have done my absolute best, but I'm sure there are things that if you're Polish that you probably know that I just wouldn't be able to pick up on. And also I apologise for my butchering of the Polish language in some of this. I actually am not even entirely sure how Magdalena's surname is pronounced. Zuk, Zuk, Zuk. I really can't pick up on it. I've tried to watch some Polish news broadcasts on this case. And yeah, it's just really hard to pick up on certain words, so please do excuse that. Magda grew up in a town called Bogatinia in Poland, and as far as I can tell, her childhood was pretty standard. She had nothing crazy outrageous ever happened to her in her childhood, although her father was an alcoholic, and I know that she did struggle with that a little bit in her later years. When she was just 17, though, she actually moved out of her family home, and she moved to a town called Zagorzalek, again I'm so sorry, um, which is about 30 minutes away from her hometown. She was a really ambitious person. In her new town she finished her cosmetic studies and by the age of just 22 she'd opened up her own beauty salon. She worked really really hard. Alongside running her own business she was working towards a bachelor's degree in dietics. Magda also had a boyfriend called Marcus. Now I think they'd been together about three maybe four months so they really hadn't been together that long and she decided to surprise Marcus on his birthday with a spontaneous trip to Egypt. And she gave him this information apparently just seven hours before they were due to leave. Apparently Magda was always pretty spontaneous and she just decided to do this nice thing for her boyfriend's birthday. But on the day, they realised that they actually had a problem with Marcus's passport. You know how all passports have expiry dates on them? Marcus's just didn't have enough time left on the end of his passport. You've got to have a certain amount of months left on your passport to be able to travel to certain countries. And so they tried to contact different authorities and things to see if Marcus could get into Egypt. And apparently everyone just said, no, there is no chance. She had booked a four-star all-inclusive resort in Marsalam on the Red Sea. It was the Three Corners Equinox Beach Resort. And she'd paid quite a lot of money for this. There's conflicting reports as to whether she paid for it herself or some say that she borrowed money from her father to do it. Um, but it was a lot of money and she did pay it. The flight was scheduled for Tuesday the 25th of April 2017 at 8.20pm. Four hours before the flight, after they realised that there was no way Marcus was getting on it, Marcus posts on Facebook and he's trying to sell his ticket. He says, I will sell trip to Egypt, flight today from Katowice, sorry, at 8.20pm, four star hotel, trip worth about $1,000. I will sell half price for two people. As far as we can tell, nobody actually offered to buy the tickets, although rumour has it that somebody did try to buy them and Marcus said no, but I think this is pretty unsubstantiated. And this does raise a bit of a question for me, because I'm pretty sure, and in fact I'm like 99% sure, that you cannot sell plane tickets, especially just four hours before you're due to leave. Your plane ticket, your boarding pass, obviously has your name on it, it's got to match up perfectly with the name on your passport, and as far as all British airlines go anyway, if you want to change the name on the passport, you've got to call them up, you've either got to completely cancel the flight and book a new one, or there's a big fee to do it. And I'm pretty sure it also requires a certain amount of time to be able to do this, maybe 48 hours before the flight. And here was Marcus trying to sell this plane ticket just four hours before it was due to leave. It just wasn't going to work. So Magda and Marcus discuss what to do. They've asked all of their friends if anybody wants to go. Nobody was free. And so Magda decides to go on her own. She works really hard. She needs a break. It's all paid for. There's no way they're going to get their money back anyway. So she decides just to go for it. And people remember seeing her on the flight and at the airport. She was acting completely, completely normally. She arrives in Egypt on the Wednesday morning and rents a car to drive from the airport to the resort. And I think it was quite a long drive. I think it was at least a couple of hours. 
Witness to say that through Magda's first day there, the Wednesday, she was drinking quite a lot. I don't personally think that's that strange. I mean, she was at an all-inclusive resort. All of her drinks would have been included. So, of course, you're going to have a few drinks. I don't see anybody saying that she was, like, blindly drunk. She was stumbling around. But people did say that she was drinking quite a lot. And then Magda slowly begins to act quite strangely and my timeline around this point gets a little bit skewed I think the times and the dates got a little bit confused in the translations um so I don't know if this was maybe the Wednesday night or the next day but people say that Magda was sitting there drinking quietly to herself and then all of a sudden she'd be up dancing chatting to everyone acting a little bit crazy and then she'd go quiet again and they just say she was acting very erratic. She would even go up to people and ask them where her boyfriend was even though Marcus wasn't even there with her, he was still back in Poland. Her family and friends started to take note of her strange behaviour as well and they weren't even there with her, they could tell from Poland by her text messages and things like that that she was just acting really odd. She would send text messages to them like they were with her in Egypt, things like where are you or come to my room now. She told people that she was hearing voices in her room. Messages were also being sent to Magda's family from the phone of the travel agent that she booked the holiday through. This was a man called Mahmood Carey. Now from what I could research, it wasn't completely crazy that Mahmood was spending time with Magda while she was in Egypt. She was there alone, so for all we know, she may have reached out to him to say like, can I sort of see you maybe? He did speak Polish and of course Magda would have had a bit of a language barrier there. Her English was really, really poor and she didn't speak Arabic. So having somebody who could speak Polish would have probably been quite nice for her. But it's also not completely unheard of for travel agents in places like Egypt and other big resorts like that to actually spend time with their clients once they arrived, acting like a kind of tour guide. As Magda's behavior got stranger and stranger, Mahmood and other hotel employees were really involved in her care. Her family were receiving a lot of messages from Mahmood with weird photos of Magda laying in bed with a towel over her face or Magda curled up in a ball in the hallway. He said he was sending them to her family so they could see the kind of state that she was in. I'm inclined to believe that this is all what happened on the Wednesday, so literally within the same day that she arrived. That's the best guess that I could take from all of the research I did, but I may be incorrect. This may be happening more into the Thursday as well. This case is gonna be really, really interesting to read about in all the comments down below. If I've got any Polish viewers, I would love to hear all of your theories down below. Um, hopefully any gaps in my knowledge, you guys can answer for me in the comments. I think this is gonna to have to be more of a discussion video than taking every single thing I say as the gospel truth, because honestly, I'm a little bit iffy on some of the facts. Eventually Magda talks to her sister on the phone and her sister later said that the conversation was really, really strange. She has no idea what Magda was actually trying to say because she was pretty much incoherent. Now later news reports said that apparently Magda said that her drink had been drugged, somebody put a date rape drug in it or something, um, but this was later proven to be false. So I think that's a very false narrative that's going around about this case, that Magda was openly saying that she thought somebody had drugged her drink, but it turns out that she never said this. Her family are obviously really, really worried about her. She's in a country on her own and is just acting so strange in a way that they've never seen her act before. And so they decide to contact the travel agency and they even contact the Polish embassy in Egypt to try and get her home. Marcus contacts one of their friends, a man called Marche, and organises for Marche to go over to Egypt to pick up Magda because obviously Marcus can't do it himself. However, there were very, very few flights going from Poland to Egypt and the other way around. And so the first flight they could book Marche on wasn't until Saturday. By the Thursday evening, her state had worsened even more and the staff were desperately trying to calm her down, but she was just hysterical. They had no idea what was going on with her. By Friday morning, other hotel guests find Magda lying in the hallway, completely unconscious. And so the hotel employees take her to the hospital. And this is where things get even stranger because there are a lot of conflicting reports about what actually happened here. So many people are saying different things. Some reports say that the hospital refused to treat her because they don't treat mental issues. And so they kind of just sent her home. Other reports say that she herself refused to be treated. And one doctor even said that Magda refused to get out of the car at the hospital and therefore they couldn't do anything. 
However, later CCTV showed that she did get out of the car at the hospital and she walked into the building quite willingly. She wasn't putting up any kind of fight. She walks in, is acting completely, completely fine. So what did actually happen here? It's obvious that the doctor was either lying or was mistaken because Magda definitely did get out of the car and she did go into the hospital. I think it is likely that she turned up to the hospital and she was actually acting pretty fine. She wasn't being erratic or hysterical like she was at the hotel. And maybe the employees or whoever was with her said that she was having mental problems and the hospital just kind of said, well, we can't deal with that, so take her back. But bear in mind at this point, she arrived in Egypt on the Wednesday morning and this is now the Friday morning. So all of this has happened in less than 48 hours. On Saturday, she's checked out of the hotel and she's taken to the airport where she was booked onto a flight to go home. And this for me is where things just don't quite add up because if Magda was hysterical and freaking out because she just wanted to go home or that something had happened to her in Egypt, she's now in the airport. This is a safe space for her. She can get on the flight, she can go home and be with her friends and family. However, at the hospital, Magda was acting even more strangely than she had before and the flight actually refused to let her on because they either thought she was drunk or that she just wasn't stable enough. She couldn't be allowed on the flight and so she got sent back to the hotel. This small point for me that Magda couldn't even keep it together enough at the airport to get home shows that she really wasn't in a good mental state. Something had happened to her mind, she'd had some form of breakdown because she just couldn't even hold it together enough to get home. She had no control over how she was acting. That's my small theory anyway. So she's taken back to the hotel where they refuse to let her check in again because she's caused them so many problems. I mean, it's kind of understandable. They call all the other hotels in the area, but they've either got no free space or they've heard about this woman and have said that they don't want her there. Later that night, Magda is in the hotel car park and she FaceTimes her boyfriend, Marcus or FaceTimes, video calls, whatever she used. I suppose it's not really relevant. But she doesn't make the call from her own phone. Now, Marcus has later said this is very strange. From what we can gather, Magda did have roaming, so she would have been able to use her own phone. But a lot of the text and a lot of the communication always came from Mahmood's phone. Marcus gets a video call from Mahmood. Mahmood is the one holding the phone. Magda has quite clearly got both of her hands free. And she's sort of standing there, rocking back and forth constantly. And this is where Marcus repeats over and over again, Magda, what's happened? Are you okay? Just tell me what's happened and we can fix this. Tell me what's happened. Tell me what's happened. And Magda really isn't making that much sense but she did have moments where she would say a sentence which makes you think that she was very much aware of what she was saying and what she was doing. This call is about 13 minutes long and of course it's in Polish uh, but you can find it on YouTube with English subtitles. I will link it down below. I'll probably include like little clips of it in here whilst I'm talking about it as well. Um, and like I said, it's basically Marcus repeating the same thing over and over again, just trying to get any information out of Magda. But she's making very little sense. Aniołku, nie bój się, powiedz mi, co się dzieje. Powiedz mi, nic się nie bój. Skarbie Maciek cię zabierze, dobrze? Rozumiesz? Skarbie, słuchasz mnie? He tells her not to be scared and he reminds her that Marche is going to be there the very next morning. And about two and a half minutes into the call, Magda says something very strange. She says, they do all kinds of things to me here. Take me out of here. Myszko? Ale co robią? Co robią? Powiedz mi. Zabierzemy cię. Maciek już po ciebie leci, ale co oni robią? Now, this sort of suggests that something's happened to Magda while she's been in Egypt and she wants to go home, but she was at the airport just a few hours earlier and she couldn't get on the flight. She's clearly not comfortable having the conversation that she's trying to have with Marcus with whoever is there with her. We can assume that it's Mahmood holding the phone and possibly one of his friends. I've seen online that people have said that the other man with Mahmood is a man called Khaled or Khalid. 
um, because Mahmoud is actually talking to him at one point. Again, I don't speak Polish or Arabic. I think they speak in Egypt. I should know that. I think I'm pretty sure it's Arabic. So I really can't confirm with you if this man's name was Khaled or Khalid. Um, but there was definitely somebody else there. At around the six minute mark, apparently, Magda says almost inaudibly, they raped me. Now, I've listened to this phone call over and over and over again. I can't really pick up on her saying anything quietly or almost inaudibly, but then again, I don't speak the language, so I re wouldn't really know what she's saying. Um, again, if you are Polish, this could be interesting for you to listen to and see if you can pick up on that as well. Kochanie, nie bój się. Ja się będę tobą opiekował. Powiedz mi, co się stało. Aniołku, powiedz mi. Proszę cię. Nie bój się. Powiedz mi teraz. Marcus keeps pushing for an answer and Magda is repeating it's pointless over and over and over again. Eventually, she does give in and gives him what everyone assumes is a very small clue as to what happened to her. She just says one letter and that letter is M. Co się stało? Mów. Powiedz śmiało, szybko, będziemy mieli to z głowy. M. Co M? Co M? Ten rezydent? Quite soon after she says this, Mahmoud or his friend, who we're going to call Khaled just to make it easier so we don't have to keep referring to him as the friend, um, says to Magda, Magda, I thought you were only going to be talking about the hospital. I've also seen other reports that said that they said, Magda, we need to go to the hospital now. Um, but I think the general consensus is they said, you are only going to talk about the hospital. Soon after this, the camera turns around and Marcus speaks to Mahmoud. Now this whole phone call was very strange and suspicious for a number of different reasons. Was the men saying, Magda, you're only going to talk about the hospital in direct response to her telling Marcus the letter M? Or was it sort of just a coincidence? They just said that at that moment because that's just how the conversation was going. Why could Magda not call it off her own phone? Why couldn't she hold the phone herself? Why did these men feel the need to be right with her and in her face and not let her have the private conversation that she clearly wanted? There's just a lot of questions surrounding this. And there's also a lot of things that can be taken from the letter M. Most of the main protagonists in the story have names that begin with M. Magda herself, Marcus, Mahmoud, and there's also Marche, who is the friend who is coming to collect her, and also the person who was recording the phone call with Marcus and Magda. So those recording that I'm going to link down below, but you've probably already seen clips of it. Um, it is obviously filmed from Marcus's end, so you can see Magda on the phone and then Marcus is in the corner in like the little box, although he's actually covering up the camera with his thumb, which is a little bit weird, so you can't actually see him. But the friend who's recording that phone call is called Michael, so there's another M. Now this next thing I'm about to tell you, just to be completely honest, I cannot verify at all. I don't speak Arabic so I can't confirm this. But I actually saw this written in the comments of another YouTube video I watched on this case. It might have been John Lorden's Brain Scratch episode. So if anybody does speak Arabic and can confirm this that would be really helpful. So apparently at the beginning of the call Mahmood is speaking to Khaled and basically says the words she's been crying since. Not saying since what. I mean he also says that he let her speak to her boyfriend um, and he doubts that he's going to do anything because his dick is so small which is just very very strange you've got this woman who's clearly having some kind of mental breakdown or is just really really upset about something and you're kind of in a way making fun of her being quite sarcastic about it not taking it as seriously as you should be I mean it might have just been banter between two friends knowing that she couldn't understand a word that they were saying um, but it just seems a little bit insensitive, if not anything more sinister. And also apparently after she says the letter M, he says that he thinks that she's retarded, which is, again, it's just very strange. Like I said though, I'm hesitant to take this as gospel, so I would like other people to confirm this for me if you can. After this call, Magda is actually taken back to the same hospital that she was at the day before. This is the Port Galib Hospital and she's taken there by Mahmood. And bear in mind the day before she'd actually walked into the hospital pretty calmly, it couldn't have been a more different story on the Saturday. She gets there and she refuses to be examined, she will not let anybody near her. And we do actually have video footage of this, um, this video footage shows her 
in the hallway. As she's in the hallway, she is surrounded by people. And two of these people aren't hospital employees, we can assume, because they're not in, like, scrubs or anything. Um, I think one of these men is most likely Mahmood, even though I can't 100% confirm that, but it would make sense that it is. And the other one may have been a hotel employee or maybe Khalid. As the footage goes on, Magda really, really starts to fight against these guys. She's not directing her anger towards the hospital employees, the people who are trying to help her, but one of these men in particular, she is really trying to attack. She is angry and she wants to escape. And at one point, Magda sort of sat in, I think it's the doorway, and one of the guys stands very, very strangely. He's sort of leaning up against the wall, standing in just a very odd position. And it kind of looks like he's purposely trying to block the camera behind him from seeing Magda, and it works because you can't see her. Eventually, she's taken into a private hospital room where she is restrained with towels. Now, apparently, this is actually quite a common medical practice when you don't have proper restraints. You tie them to the bed using towels because it's not as harsh on the skin, and also it doesn't leave any marks. As for what happened next, I suppose nobody's ever really gonna know. A nurse has said that she went into the room to sort of tend to Magda, and Magda said that she needed to use the toilet, so the nurse untied her. When Magda was free, she attacks the nurse, and then turns around and jumps out of the window. Now, all the news reports say this was a second story window, but I'm not entirely sure if that's UK second story, or maybe a more of American second story, because most of these translations were to American news sites. Um, if you're not sure of the difference there, uh, in England we have ground floor first, second, and in the US I think it's just first, second, third. Um, I suppose it doesn't really matter, but it'd be interesting to know how exactly far she fell. Magda lands on the concrete steps down below, and she lands on her left side. And this makes everyone ask the question, did she commit suicide? Did she mean to jump out and kill herself? Or did she just want to jump out of the window to try and escape? However, Magda didn't die immediately when she hit the ground. She was still alive, but pretty severely injured all down her left side. And so she is rushed to another hospital in Haggadah, which is about three hours north of Masa Alam. And it was in this hospital in Haggadah that she actually ended up dying from her injuries early on the Sunday morning. Marche arrives in Egypt on the Sunday morning after taking an overnight flight to the news that Magda has died. And that's pretty much all of the facts we have about Magda's death. Even information about the autopsy is very, very limited, and this is nearly a year and a half after the death. I know that people are waiting for the autopsy to be revealed about a month after everything that happened, but no, we're a year and a half on and still we don't know the details. Um, there are only one or two articles online that sort of specify things, and both of those are in Polish. The original autopsy was conducted in Egypt, but with a Polish man assisting, but when Magda's body was extradited back to Poland, they did a second autopsy. The rough Google translation of what I read says that biological material does not indicate any rape. There was no trace of violence. Her injuries were typical from falling from a height and she had traces of strong drugs in her system, although not a date rape drug or anything along those lines. The drugs in her system were actually antipsychotics, which were most likely given to her while she was in hospital. Egypt and Poland both reacted very, very differently to the death, as you would expect. After the autopsy, the Egyptian authorities ruled her death a suicide, whereas Poland was completely up in arms about it. In Poland, Magda's face was on every newsstand in the country. You couldn't turn on the TV without seeing her face. But Egypt really tried to just brush it under the rug. Egypt makes most of their money from tourism, but in recent years, after terrorism worries and things like that, not many tourists go to Egypt anymore. I know in the UK that we're actually advised not to go there just because of terror threats. So it's kind of understandable that Egypt tried to cover up Magda's death and really sort of limit any news articles on it because it looked bad on their behalf and they couldn't take any more hit to their tourism. I know when it first happened, the Polish authorities did say that they also thought it was a suicide, but I'm not sure what their stance is now, 18 months on. I couldn't find any fresh articles about it. So now we're going to move on to some theories and just some general conversation points that I have about the case. We're going to start by talking about the fact that maybe Magda actually did just have a psychotic break and all of her behaviour was because of this. 
A lot of people argue that Magda booking this spontaneous holiday was the first sign of some kind of manic episode. Although her family do say that she was a very spontaneous person in general, but to be honest, booking a flight and only telling a person that you're going on the same day is kind of past the point of spontaneous. It's kind of a bit reckless. Of course, I don't want to diagnose Magda with anything. I have no idea what was really going on in her mind. But I have seen a lot of people on the internet suggest maybe she had bipolar disorder undiagnosed and she was suffering with a manic episode or maybe something even more than that. But according to Magda's family, she had no history of any kind of mental illness. She did attend therapy for a bit because of her dad's alcoholism and she was trying to like work through her feelings about that. But I think she was actually on good terms with her dad by the point she died. And yeah, I just don't think she had any diagnosed mental problems. But if you are Polish, I would be quite interested to know what the stigma around mental health is like in Poland in general. Would her family be likely to admit if she did have some sort of mental illness or would they be more likely to stay quiet about it? Another similar line of speculation is that maybe Magda took some kind of drug on the plane and I'm not talking about illegal drugs, maybe an anti-anxiety or a sleeping pill or something like that. Um, I did do a bit of research and reading around this and it's actually not completely unheard of for maybe an anti-anxiety drug to cause actual further mental problems. Apparently it is possible for these kinds of drugs to trigger some kind of psychotic episode. Um, it's rare, but it's not unheard of. Although she clearly was in a good enough mental state when she arrived at the airport to drive the two or three hour drive to Master Alarm by herself. I mean, there's no doubt that no matter what happened to her, her mental health really took a hit and it triggered something in her brain and she just was unable to function after that point. So let's say she arrives in Egypt alone. She doesn't know anyone. She can't speak the language and she panics. She spends all day drinking when she arrives at the resort and her state is gradually getting worse and worse. She's just got herself into this complete state of panic. People try to help her, but she's so convinced that something bad has happened to her or something bad is going to happen to her that she just will not listen to anyone. I mean, it's a theory that's often overlooked, but it's actually quite possible that the men that were trying to help her didn't have any sinister intentions. They weren't trying to hurt her. They hadn't hurt her at all. They were actually trying to help. They had no idea how to deal with this girl and her failing mental health and they were just completely out of their depth. On a much smaller level, I suffer with anxiety quite bad and when I get myself into that headspace of just panic, there is nothing anyone can say or do that will be able to talk me out of the headspace. If I am panicking about something, I don't care how logical everyone else around me is being and how stupid and weird everyone else thinks I am. My brain cannot latch on to that logic. It just doesn't work. It's only always like an hour or two later when I'm out of that panic and my head is clearer that I can look back and be like, oh, okay, that was stupid. This is what I should have done in that situation. But my brain just shuts down and maybe something similar like that on a bigger scale happened to Magda. There's also the question of whether or not she meant to kill herself. Did she just want to jump out and escape or did she actually want to die? She was trying to escape what she saw as a bad situation, but maybe she just didn't realise the consequences of doing that. Maybe she just saw the window as an escape, not thinking if I jump out of this, I'm going to injure myself. However, none of this explains the strange video call. Who is M? Who does she mean by that? And why couldn't she just say their full name? Or maybe M doesn't even stand for a name. Maybe M is something completely separate. Why did she possibly say she was raped? I mean, the only logical explanation to her saying that is that she was raped. Here we're gonna talk about Mahmood a little bit, but I'm also gonna have a bit of a conversation about Egyptian culture in general. And I'd really like to have your input on this particular detail. Um, so Magda was a blonde haired, blue eyed white woman from Poland. Um, and she would have attracted quite a lot of attention in a place like Egypt. I mean, she would have caught attention anywhere. She was a really striking looking girl. Now, I've never personally been to Egypt, so I cannot comment on this at all, which is why I need your guys' input here. But I've seen a lot of reports online of women saying that they go to Egypt and they get a bit more attention than they would like. I mean, apparently a lot of Egyptian men are quite open with just like grabbing you and touching you inappropriately. Of course, this is a massive, massive generalization, um, but I'm just literally repeating to you what I've read on the internet. If you've been to Egypt, especially if you have sort of blonder hair, I would really like to know if you experience this same kind of attention. This is slightly different, but I have a friend who is blonde hair, blue eyed herself, and she went to Japan and she literally had men grabbing her on the street 
just because she was so different looking. I'm really conscious of the fact that I don't want to offend by saying any of that, which is why I'm asking for your guys' inputs. So if you are Egyptian or if you've been to Egypt and experienced anything like that, I definitely want your input. The reason that I bring that up is it's very possible that maybe Magda was at her hotel, even though it was more of a tourist resort, and maybe someone took a liking to her and did actually spike her drink or did rape her. But that is something that can happen literally anywhere in the world, sadly. Now there are plenty of reasons why people suspect Mahmood Carey in this. The M that Magda said in the video call just being one of them. The fact that Mahmood seemed reluctant to allow the conversation to continue after this makes it even stranger and the fact that he tried to change the subject by saying Magda I thought you were only going to talk about the hospital it just seems so suspicious. It's not unbelievable that Mahmood could have raped Magda. She was in a very vulnerable position in a country on her own where she doesn't speak the language and he would have been her only sort of connection to the outside world at this point. The rape could have caused some mental breakdown or maybe she was just so ashamed for what happened to her that she just couldn't bring herself to say it. She just couldn't keep herself together. She seems to have a male with her at all times. She's never really left alone. Even in the hospital, these men are still with her. The only time that she actually wasn't with a male, so we think, is when she was in the private hospital room. Was Mahmood scared that Magda would say something if she was left alone? I mean, I don't think they would have suspected her to have the reaction that she had. It's possible that maybe they've done the same thing to Taurus before Magda and they just haven't reacted in such a hysterical way that Magda did and after that point they were kind of like well we can't leave her alone, we don't know what to do with her, we're just going to take her to the hospital and hope that they deal with her there. But like I mentioned earlier it could literally just be like they didn't want to leave her alone because she was a danger to herself. Mahmood did delete his Facebook page shortly after everything happened, after his name got released into the papers. Um, people do take this as an admission of guilt, although I'm less inclined to believe so. I think he would have been receiving a lot of attention, most likely a lot of abuse from people back in Poland. And so it kind of makes sense that he would deactivate his Facebook. A lot of people suspect that human trafficking was what was happening to Magda here and that her acting so hysterically was possibly the only reason that they didn't take her away sooner. I've read multiple theories that Mahmood was involved in some kind of sex trafficking, human trafficking gang and that their plan was to take Magda away and sell her. They kept her close so they could make sure she didn't say anything and eventually transport her away somewhere but her crazy behaviour meant that they couldn't do this subtly. But the one thing that doesn't make sense with this theory is that they took her to the hospital and they took her to the airport. If Magda had been acting fine at the airport, she would have got on that plane and she would have got home, like without a doubt. The only reason she wasn't allowed on is because she was acting so, so strangely. So if they were planning to human traffic her, why would they willingly drop her at the airport? There's a lot of theories that Marcus was actually in on this. If this was a human trafficking kind of situation, Marcus organised for Magda to go over to Egypt. He knew Mahmood and they had this whole plan set up. Um, and Magda kind of just destroyed this with her behaviour. And the theory that Marcus had something to do with it is really, really popular around Poland. Now this obviously completely goes against the whole storyline that Magda got him the tickets to surprise him for his birthday and that they tried to sell the tickets and all of this. Although they did try to sell the tickets, that is a status up on Marcus's Facebook. So we know that for a fact. Um, apparently Magda did borrow money from her dad for the tickets, although I haven't seen this 100% confirmed anywhere, although I'm pretty sure it would be pretty easy to confirm. Um, I would like to know who did book the tickets. If the tickets were booked all through Magda's name, through her bank account, then that kind of throws a spanner in the works with this theory. And I suppose it'd be pretty easy to do a back check on that and see who actually booked it all and organised it all, because if it does come up to be under Marcus's name, then he's been lying since the very, very beginning. One of the main reasons that people do suspect Marcus so much is that during the video call, he was covering the camera with his thumb, like I mentioned earlier. I mean, this could have been something completely innocent. When you're calling your girlfriend who you're really, really worried about, you don't really think, oh, she needs to see my face, or oh, my camera's covering the thumb. You just don't notice that he was focusing on her. But a lot of people do say it was suspicious and that he was kind of covering up the screen so he could send sort of signs to Magda and that he was sort of signing something to her, maybe threatening her or something along those lines. Again, I think it's a very, very loose theory. It could have something to it. And it's possible that there are theories written in Polish that are much more detailed than this. Um, but 
I do find it hard to believe that Marcus had something to do with it. Although, and this is pretty damning, apparently Marcus and Marche are friends with Mahmood on Facebook and apparently they were friends on Facebook before any of this happened, before Magda ever went to Egypt. And I've got to admit, this is very suspicious. I think this is mainly where all the theories about them all organising this sort of human trafficking thing together comes from. But could it be possible that the reason Magda organised to go to this particular resort in Egypt is because she knew Mahmood and she knew that Marcus knew Mahmood and thought they could all go over there together and spend some time together. I just feel like there are some massive, massive gaps in information in this. So many of the questions I have could be answered just by asking some of the family members, asking Marcus, why are you friends with Mahmood on Facebook? But these are things that may have been asked and I just can't find in my translations. Honestly, I feel like I'm missing some context here. The final thing I'm gonna to touch on and another huge question that people have about this is did Magda actually really jump from the window or was she pushed? People say that because she landed on her side, it's more like she was pushed when she wasn't expecting it than she jumped, because if she jumped, she would have tried to have landed on her feet, but she just landed flat on her side. Who could have pushed her? Could it have been Mahmood or maybe the nurse or just somebody completely, completely random? That's a question we'll never really know the answer to. If I had to take a guess at the most likely theory in this, I would say that she possibly was raped and sort of had a bad mental breakdown leading from this and just couldn't keep her shit together basically um, and then try to escape the situation. I don't, I really don't know if I think she committed suicide or if she was just trying to run away. Um, if she was raped, maybe it was suicide because she was so ashamed. Um, but yeah, I'm leaving it open to you. Please let me know what you think about this. Before I end this week's mystery, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and supporting my videos. If you would like to support my channel even more, I am selling pins now. These three adorable little pins, and I don't even know if you can see them that clearly on camera. Um, I will have the link in the first line of the description box down below. Any money I make from these pins goes straight back into my channel for equipment and things like that. Um, yeah, so it would be really helpful if you do like my videos. Maybe consider purchasing a pin. I do ship worldwide. Um, and on that note, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.